is considering declaring a national climate emergency to unlock federal powers and stifle oil development. That's according to Bloomberg. Meanwhile, the administration is announcing several projects this Earth Week. The plans include solar energy conservation, clean water, green transportation, and cutting pollution. For some analysis, we want to bring on Melissa Lott. She's a professor at Columbia University's Climate School. She also hosts the Big Switch podcast, which explains how to rebuild our energy systems. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. Tell me what a climate emergency is and, and what that might entail. So when we talk about the potential for the president to declare a climate emergency, what it's saying is, you know what, there's a national emergency going on, and I need extra powers to be able to respond to it to protect the U.S. This is a contentious decision if it's made. This discussion has come up many times. But if it is made, then the president would have additional powers in the short term, almost immediately. And what, what might those powers look like and who would be the first to be nervous about new powers the president might have? In other words, I mean, would it be fossil fuel companies? Would it, how, would, how might that work out? Yeah, so if the president does this, he would have access to a lot of different powers. I know what's being talked about is the ability to control how we're able to sell fossil fuels. Are we able to export it? Are we able to send it to different parts of the world? Now, obviously, the countries, the organizations that depend on those exports, they would be concerned about it, as would companies. Um, but that's not all that the president can do. The president can do a lot to bolster up the manufacturing, the production of clean energy technologies. And combined with some other powers that he has, or that he could take advantage of, he could move the needle when it comes to climate change and emissions. So it's a mixed bag. Mm -hmm. I will say, when you talk to companies, uncertainty is the worst. If I can plan around it, I'm happy, even if it's maybe not the outcome I wanted. So the uncertainty of, is this going to happen, when might it happen, and how might it be implemented is a stress point. Uh, let me ask you about the Climate core. Mm -hmm. um, how do you understand the climate core and what it's supposed to do? It obviously echoes of FDR. Yeah. Um, yeah. What, what are we getting from the climate core, which the president uh, discussed yesterday? Yeah, so the climate core is trying to address, or at least as an outsider, as a professor at a university when I'm studying it, it's trying to address a couple different things. One, we do not have the workforce that we need if we want to reduce emissions, if we want to clean up pollution. We don't have people trained in the different skill sets that we need, and we need them very quickly if we're going to respond to climate change, which is already happening and already affecting our health. So as a result of that, how do we train up those people at the same time, show folks that there are opportunities for all different skill sets, all different backgrounds to contribute positively in their communities, in their states? Last question. We are in a, a presidential year. Let's amend, and I'm not going to ask you about the uh, political thing except this, try and do it this way. There are going to be voters who care about the climate. Yes. How do those voters evaluate a sitting president and, and what he has done and what he should have done in the context of a world in which there's a lot of partisanship and where you can't just wave a wand as a president? How should those voters think about how they're going to evaluate, if they care about climate, how they should evaluate the incumbent president? Yeah, so when you look at the president, a president has a certain number of powers. I mean, we can go back to schoolhouse rock days, you know, and, and who's got the division of powers and where. The president has certain ones that he can implement, that he can take advantage of, soft powers and hard powers. So which ones has he done successfully? So you can look at the Inflation Reduction Act. You can look at other policies that have become law and his role there, but also in terms of executive orders, what initiative he's taken. One example of those is Justice 40. So how are we making sure benefits go to communities that have been disadvantaged and been underinvested in the past. How has the president actually addressed that? So it's a combination of things, realizing the president in this country does not have all the powers, only has some of them. Melissa Lott from Columbia University's Climate School. Thank you so much for being with Thanks us. Thanks for having me.